Truth Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include the following. Heightened senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out-of-body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. Instruments in the background, eh? Make it look a bit nicer. Can't see my. Won't you come, come and take me away? I just wanna be with you. Won't you come, come and take me away? To a place to walk on trouble seas, faith to stand when I don't be. into the Truth Seeker Podcast. Argos! Psychics! Everything's ungodly! Dark savage! Streaming live at truthseeker.com. She's not a Christian! Give it up, y'all. Your portal to the paranormal, esoteric, and all things spiritual. She's tampering in dark savage stuff! And now, your host, Truth Seeker. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm your host, Truth Seeker. This is... Truth Seeker Podcast. We're going to get it in. We're going to get into some discussion. We discuss all things spiritual, tying it back to spirituality. We're going to be talking about hip hop. We're going to be talking about consciousness. We're going to be talking about the occult. Ooh, that's kind of scary, right? A lot of people. We're going to get to the bottom of that. What does that word mean? You know, we like to discuss that stuff and hidden knowledge, esoteric wisdom, whatever that is, um, infused in hip hop music. That's what we're going to do. Exciting show. Phone lines are open. The number is in the bottom of whatever you're watching this on. Don't know. Uh, call the number 605-562-0444. Show ID is 78643. Punch that in and uh, probably about an hour in, 45 minutes in, something like that. We'll uh, let you join the conversation if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or you just want to uh, say hello. Uh, we're going to utilize that feature. So, uh, I want to say a huge thank you to all of the Patreon supporters who uh, make this podcast possible. Uh, this is a listener-supported show, um, reaching new heights and new levels and needing financial assistance to make it happen. It's just kind of part of living in Babylon. And so thank you guys for um, all the support and being co-creators with us here Um and this show doesn't exist without your help. So thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. If you'd like to support, go to patreon.com backslash truth seeker. There you get access to my entire discography of music, which is like 200 plus songs. Our Thursday night school of the mystics, which is really fun. And a bunch of other really cool stuff. Meditations, really cool stuff. Try to make it worth your while. Patreon.com backslash true seeker. Shout out to some of the latest patrons within the last week or so. Shout out to Melissa Pincelli. Thank you, Melissa. And Scion Fire, who uh, just joined as well and got to meet him last night in the School of the Mystics. He joined us from Taiwan, I believe it was. He's in Taiwan. And so we got people all over the world coming together. Today, my guest is Cosmic Serpent. And brother, you are joining us from where? Oh, we're over here in Australia at the moment. Australia? What time is it, man? Uh, right now, it's three in the morning over here. <laughs> it's 10 in the morning for me. And uh, yeah, so we we're, there's a time lapse thing going on there with the uh, um, time zones and stuff. And we tried to book it and I had you set up for yesterday. And I was like, man, my guess was a no show. But uh, the dates were different because you're like, what are you, like a day behind us, I guess it is? Yeah, I honestly thought that we were a day ahead, you know. I thought so too. Rising over here first. 
But uh, yeah, I probably just got my dates mixed up, eh? Well, it it worked out, man. We had a great show yesterday. Did a uh, open line show and hung out with the chat, and it was some really good content came through. So if we can meet or beat that today, we'll be good. Excited to talk to you, man. You hit me up um, maybe a month or so ago in in my inbox on on Facebook and said, "Hey, man, love what you're doing." And you know, we just kind of uh, just you know have mutual ground there and wanted to talk and stuff. I was like, "Hey, let's do a podcast episode." And here we are, man. Just kind of if the people don't, if nobody's ever heard of you here, you have some people in chat already hanging out. But for the people who don't know who you are, kind of just give a little bit of background about who you are and uh, what you bring to the table. Oh, boy. Yeah, so I'm commonly known as Celestial Serpent, yeah, and uh, I've, I've been working in hip-hop for maybe uh, five years and bringing that into social work, and I work a lot with um, First Nation people and bringing the hip-hop into the, the ghettos and the communities, and, and as we do that, we bring the elders and, and bring language and culture through that. I'm also involved in a whole bunch of other non-for-profits that me and my people started up are doing a lot of um, reforesting, natural ecologies, ruins to the permaculture. And, uh, yeah, yeah, conscious hip-hop and pumping that out and playing with bands, touring for the last last five years or so. But, yeah, been been chilling and down in the ground because I had a little baby. So planting lots of trees and investing in a different way now. So, yeah. But yeah, Celestial Serpent is uh, what I've been playing under for a while now. And I think I called, think I called you Cosmic and Serpent. I'm Aotearoa in Australia, so a lot of the, the cats out there probably haven't heard of me because I haven't made it to the States yet. I just shipped a painting over there with some, um, which was was uh, a lot of the, the Maori designs, which is lots of korus and stuff like that. The ferns, which is like, you know, the Fibonacci stuff, all that mathematics but it's expressed through the, the, the Maori culture of Aotearoa. So a, I spend most of my time over here. It's a pretty, it's very, very interesting history because it all, all embeds back to, you know, the, the, the colonial process and and the different uh, dis- dispositions. And, you know, it's quite interesting history that, that we're working on over here. Well, it's some, some really interesting narratives. But, um. Yeah, I, I guess the bottom line is I was wanted to talk some occult stuff today. Yeah. Wanted to talk about the I am, talk about the, uh, you know, the highest expression of, of self. And, you know, a lot of my lyrics are dedicated to astro theology and all aspects of mysticism and to, you know, yeah. So, you know, I, I figured, uh, seeing, uh... seeing your music coming across it the other day and jumping up to you, I was like, man, this guy's got some conscious tunes, eh? So, yeah. Does the name Santos Bonacci ring a bell to you, Australia? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So I, I got I got a song with with a sample of his at the start. Yeah, he's he's quite he's an interesting fellow. He actually just lives not not just down the road because it's actually Australia is actually a really big place. There's actually hundreds and hundreds of languages here, and then dialects among those. So like, there's like yeah, <laughs> it's it's a pretty big continent. This one. Yeah, you meant but, uh, to astrotheology. Um, that's what I was going to yeah, ask Yeah, he, he lives, he, and he's, he's got some pretty gnarly stuff, eh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. Um, so what is it, dude, about the occult? Because, like, some of the stuff you're talking about just in your introduction is more nature-oriented. It's more uh, for the people. Mm. Most people, when they hear the word the occult or see the hidden symbolism and celestial serpent and hear these kind of terms or whatever, there a lot of times there's like a red flag that comes up. The occult is mm. something bad. It's not to be played with. You can get in trouble messing with it. What is it? Because, like, your persona and what you bring to the table, it seems to be peace, love, harmony, unity, oneness with all beings. Like, so, so where, where does the occult come in there for you? And what does even that word mean for you? Yeah, great. Yeah. Let's jump onto that word. Cause you know, it, it, it really just means the hidden and the hidden attribute more talking to the inner self and the, the dialogue and the philosophy of, of, you know, a lot of intellectual and like shamanistic things, even, you know, things of, of, of like ancient esoteric origin and esoteric just means the inner man and it can be used often in occults and stuff because there is a lot of secret knowledge and secret societies but my, my focus isn't so much on that but more 
on the yeah the, the ancient um, ancient origins of, of what these are. And yeah, I guess the the occult like occulted information is more just understanding uh, symbology and understanding what what a symbol means on I guess multiple levels because it's like a language just just like etymology understands like the, the the nature of where where a word comes from and how it's changed over time so so too does a symbol have like a very vast quantity of meanings and and, and uses depending on how an occultist is using it. But the occult world is very, very strange and diverse, you know, and it is a place of dark magic and this and that and different interpretations. But, yeah, in, in generally speaking, there's, you know, it's just, just the word of, uh, you know, of, of the, the magus, as you know, the, the, of the truth seeker, of the person looking inside of themselves. And, yeah. It seems like it would be more from a way that we approach it with be instead of occult knowledge or secret knowledge, it's almost like knowledge that has become secret now. It's almost like forgotten knowledge, forgotten mm. wisdom of self, of our spirituality, our connection to the land. Now we talk about this and our connection to the stars even. Like now we talk about mm. this. This is occult, esoteric, far out. But our ancestors not only knew this, but they lived by this and it was like a, a way of life. Right. And we have to like rediscover mm. it because it's become lost where we are now with the technological age and all of this kind of stuff moving away from that. Yeah. Well, I, I just lost my phone recently and it was actually quite a blessing because I, you know, I spent so much more present time with my daughter, with my family and like technology is wonderful. It's amazing. We can, we can speak across the internet and like, you know, it was a bit sus with the bandwidth because we're out on the wop wops here, but yeah, the interesting attribute of life is, is living with the land and, yeah, I think that's a very important um, part of, of re- recognizing and, you know, rediscovering self is your relationship to the land. And the land is also in, in need of that uh, and uh, that biodiversity and that relationship. So, yeah, a lot of the stuff we're trying to do with releasing our music and making dollars as well as to, to rejuvenate the land because that's, uh, at the end of the day, that's, that's what we need to do in this particular time of, so, you know, even though the, the I am is talking about the inner self as well and, you know, all the esoteric matters, it's also discussing our relationship, I think, with the land, uh, with the land and with others, you know, with society. And, I, yeah, I, I think the, the, the occult can also be used in, in that paradigm as people come together, they, they congregate and they're like cells coming together to form a larger thing, you know, we can we can kind of tap into this uh into this 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 new uh this new knowledge of the old knowledge coming through you know because it's amazing with the information age as well with this knowledge like that you can jump on the internet and watch lectures and you know this was <laughs> this is revolutionary to my life too yeah but so is nature but they're, they're very diverse but you know they're both they're both so, well, i mean what an age to live in really should be a balance right yeah promoting that balance and i think i think that i think that spirituality does that i mean there was certain music that really did it for me you know knock bear Mm. medicine for the people like their music like drew me to want to go hiking drew me to want to sit beside a tree like you know what i'm saying like Mm. there's something in it that was like a, a call to return to nature and so i know i do i'm sure you do as well try to embody that within your music and offer that to other people like not to demonize technology because like we're using it to our advantage me and you were like on the opposite ends of the earth right now we're having this conversation with a bunch of other people all over the world so it's really interesting we're using it for our good but it's about a balance of it and you know be uh, remaining grounded and not being lost in either or because there are people who would just hit the woods and i'm done with technology i'm done with family gatherings i'm done with holidays and consumerism and they're just gone you don't hear from them again and there's people who are on the other side where all they do is consume and all they are into is the computers and social media and likes and blogs and all of that stuff. So I really believe that it's a balance that we, you know, we have to uh, walk in. And it's, it's hard, you know. Yeah, it was just like you and Patreon and doing that, you know, balancing commerce is a whole nother component. But it gives you such another like a plethora of what you can access. And it's quite, a, quite really fascinating what yeah. you can do with money as well. and. 
you know, we would like to in the future, because because we're, we're doing stuff here with a non-for-profit called Live on Love, and then that, that this is the first model that we're doing of a, of a community infrastructure and using sacred geometry and some of this occult stuff and more mathematic formulas of how we operate our commerce and how we put invest the money back into the community and it kind of spirals and and, and, and and at the moment we're just yeah we've we've got you know just just so many food forests that are that are growing they're still quite young as is the project but uh yeah it's just amazing to think that that these ideas that we can have could could make an impact on some of the climate issues that we're having some of the ecological uh difficulties that we're having in a monoculture monocropping kind of um, aspect of our society I know over here it's like one of the driest continents in the world here in Australia, so it's quite a – there's lots of deserts, but there's a few little rainforest pockets, but the the water's very precious over here. And Yeah, I don't know. It's been a a narrative in my life, a lot lot involved in activism and stuff like that, protecting our resources, protecting like water being one of the most precious ones. So, yeah. Yeah, that's something that's been in the news um, lately too. And the consciousness yeah, of the people, right? Some kind of fighting over the water. Mm. Yeah, we're, and we've had like big fires here as well. Like it's big fire country. In fact, the, the indigenous mob here, they used to do something called fire stick farming. And that was using um, that particular the asset of, of the fire, which, which brings the water and also brings a fertilization. And it's, and it's key for particular biological species, like the daisy yam and other things like that. So they used to do the, the the fires regularly, which would look after the country. But the um, but because like white men are generally a little bit more afraid of fire, like the, the since the colonialization of this land, because it's quite a quite a crazy vast land. It's it's got a little bit out of hand, and there's just, yeah, because of the lack of water, because of the um, yeah, you know, there's there's still issues over here with, with CSG and other stuff like that. I mean, I'm not sure. That obviously, I'm a bit off topic now talking about activism, but <laughs> there's just there's just other stuff that we're doing over here, and the we that that's kind of relevant in our lives, and that's that's part of that. I am, I guess, because as I think in, environmental stuff has just become quite quite real, and 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 in my life, you know, it's, it's always been there, yeah. doing activism, but um, yeah, getting out there into the the communities yeah. and. And, and and doing that type of Did thing, you, you know. Was you ever into like like the uh, political side of it? Because uh, there's like this there's this like yeah. uh, transition for a lot of people. Because I started doing like political stuff and wanting to do rallies and marches mm-hmm. and fight the new world order and all this kind of stuff. But then you find out that, like you can march all you want. It's not really it's not really bring about any change. It's like seeing the next level from moving from this political mm-hmm. realm uh is is tapping into the spiritual realm and and you know what i'm saying working on oneself and then kind of uh uh almost like the uh flower of life uh, affecting other people like the ripple effect like let me change myself and help to change these people spiritually and then therefore they'll be able to make their choices and if you change them spiritually you're going to change them politically anyway right they're they're change you know everything mm-hmm. changes ab- about them right did you go down that path a little bit in politics and was it in your music? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we still do a lot of, um, ag- advocacy stuff and stuff. I'm working with mob and, uh, you know, like we, we, we just, we, like me and my, my partner have been doing some stuff with this, uh, this fella called Alwyn Doolan over here. And he, and he's been doing a whole bunch of walking around in the countries, all the different, you know, the, the, the ancient people in the ancient countries and um, yeah, he, he he was doing a lot of activism work and and trying to bring trying to bring his people together, which is you know there's still a, like a fragmentation among the mob over here as well as you know the uh, the racism, the the post racist kind of um, traumas and the I mean I don't know if you know much about this this country of Australia, but it's a uh, it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty intense one. Like the, I mean, the, the 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 people that did apartheid in South Africa, they learned how to do things from from Australia. The successes here from that perspective. So it's it's, it's quite quite rough here. And but there there there's a lot of re identity coming back and a lot of lawsuits and sovereignty. 
So I, I am involved in the political stuff, but only to a degree because it's black man's business. Cause that's kind of the way it is because they're, 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 they're building it back. And it's, it's just something that I, that I nurture with my particular craft and with the foundations that I'm involved in. But um, yeah, the politics, as you say, it can be quite, uh, I, you know, I was a very angry, hateful person for a while and a, and a gangster for a, a lot of my life. And I turned all that around and the non-for-profits and stuff I do now is more, more the positive because, you know, it's just, yeah, very, very destructive. And, and like, like you say, the, the political stuff can, yeah, it's, it's quite hard working out there. And if you're dealing with uh, uh, police, if you're dealing with police and, um, and all that, it can be, it can be quite, quite strenuous. So yeah, myself, no, I don't, I don't do, do that as much anymore. Yeah. Try to yeah. keep it on the, on the, on the, on the positive and, and do it, do what I can in a small fragmented way. And like you say, hopefully resonate something out outwardly like sacred geometry, which yeah, has been an obsession of mine for a very long time. It's, it's another thing I do is I've been painting sacred geometry art for, yeah, for quite a few years now. I think symbolism is what, what like lured me there. Have Love you heard, symbolism. Have you heard about Terrence Howard recently and what he's got going on with sacred geometry? Have you looked into that? Yeah, oh, shit, shit. What, what, what is it, my friend? Oh my God. He's blowing my mind. Um, let's yeah. see. So he, um, he was on the uh, red carpet for the Emmys, and I'm gonna try to play some of this. Let me see if I can share my audio here and let you hear some of this. But this, because you're into it, like I definitely need to let you hear this. So let's see. Share computer sound. There we go. Uh oh, technology being a little bit iffy. Here we go. All right. So let me see if I can play. Some of this but for you. we've never no less. We put 15 episodes of complete these 15 episodes of Empire. So he's on the uh, the red carpet here. You gotta walk away for a while or forever. For good. I'm. I'm I mean, everyone yeah. keeps trying to tell me don't say it's forever. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I've spent 37 years pretending to be people so that people can pretend to watch and enjoy what I'm doing when I've made some discoveries in my own personal life with the science that you know, Pythagoras was searching for. I was able to open up the flower of life properly and find the real wave conjugations that we've been looking for for 10,000 years. Why would I continue, you know, walking on water for tips when I've got an entire generation to teach a whole new world? To t that, that's a big remark. Yeah. What, what, what do you intend to, to do? Well, let me put it this way. All energy in the universe is expressed in motion. All motion is expressed in waves. All waves are curved. So where does the straight lines come from to make the platonic solids? There are no straight lines. So when I took the flower of life and opened it properly, I found a whole new wave conjugations that expose the in-between spaces. That's, it's the thing that holds us all together. <laughs> okay, uh, we're I didn't, I didn't just the, the media, the news. They're all they they're laughing at it. What the hell is he talking about? He's a crazy person. Um, yeah, right. He did an interview with this girl, and you need to listen to it. It's about two and a half, three hours long, and he is on some next level using sacred geometry to harness free energy. Like, mm -hmm. really looking at taking the sacred ge geometry and almost turning them, them into th 3D objects. And now we've seen, like, the Star of David, the Hexagon, and things like that, looking like the Merkaba, right, if it's 3D. But he's taken the, um, uh, <laughs> the Flower of Life and turning it into a 3D object, like a cylinder. And um, it's just, I can't even explain it. Like, but he's showing you yeah, ways yeah. that they are oh, harnessing free, free energy with the sacred geometry and he's and he's got the money to do it like he's like one of the on one of the biggest shows and he's stepping down to really focus on this and so it's definitely something to look into but make sure you watch that that interview that he did with this girl on her on her youtube channel and um it's crazy have you heard any have you heard anything about that as far as like using sacred ge geometry to harness fr free energy and things like that yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've seen quite a lot of it in my life. I've 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 met some pretty pretty crazy people. Had, <laughs> had a pretty crazy life actually. Tra well, traveling he's around got, the world, meeting he, people. Yeah, he's got a. Uh, he's got like these. Uh, like he's got the money. He's got the models. 
He can show you. They got the 3D images. So it's not like these weird theories. Like he's actually like stepping out on them, which is the, the different thing versus, you know, Pythagoras or the philosophy, the books and things like that, that we read. He's actually doing it, which is crazy. Yeah, well, I think I think there are some different zero point technologies out there, and I think from Tesla and, and even back to like if, if if you analyze some of Tesla's technology and compare it to the the Great Pyramids of Khufu, Cheops, you know, or even older dynasties, as a lot of people do believe, you know, you see some parallels with that technology, and in fact, there's the same things that that are working in, in like a guitar pickup. Like the, that piezoelectric cell is the same component of silica that's a, that's in the pyramids. So, so I, th- I think that technology is is in our resonance. You know, it's been there a long time, and and the ley lines of, of the Earth, the resonance of that is kind of encoded into the same physics that was understood by the people that that built pyramids. You know, and these pyramids all over the world, and and I think um, I think most definitely that technology is is coming out. It's obviously been oppressed for quite a long time if you've, you've, you've followed the technological sphere because a lot of them just get bought out the patents and squashed because there's still money in, you know, it's, it's about, uh, and just like in the day of Tesla, you know, it became about can it be metered, can it be measured and profited from because if it can't, it's not good for that industry. So I think there's still that type of power struggle going on, but at the same time, yeah, there's definitely technology. I, I've seen a couple of them. I've seen a few inventors. I, I haven't seen things that are sufficiently putting back into the grid, and something is still only worth its um, its its energy value of what um, those components took to mine and take from the earth. You know, so that's that's um, that's a component that's always weighing against any piece of technology as well. So, but I think we're getting more efficient, and it's it's you know solar solar panels and you know, there's there's more there's more and more technologies becoming available, but it's definitely. But yeah, I, I think it's. Uh, I, I think it's still. I think obviously geometry is completely the key because geometry has all the platonic solids, which have all chemistry, and then you know all, all sound and vibration is is based on geometry. So it's most definitely the grid and the, and the patterns. You know, all the all the the secrets definitely lay there. And they'll, you know, it's the same technology used by a flower to to equally share all the photons and the way it's it's designed and it moves and its petals grow, you know. Yeah. So it's that same technology that will most most definitely, you know, liberate. But um, I think it's definitely already there. But it's people got to go out there and make it and create it. And you can actually build windmills out of um, washing machines. You can. You can build quite a lot of stuff. You just you just got to get together with your people and put your energies and resources towards these little things. You know, it's it's pretty fun like thing to to, to play around with. It's being suppressed we've, we've though, right? By the uh, by the you know the oil companies and all of these like it's, old white it's men. It's being right? yeah. It's being very much swayed in a way where it can be put through the capitalistic. But I mean, that's what the market is. You know, the market is. It should be unlocked. though. Like, if we can harness free energy, like it totally should be. But they're like, oh, you it's, know, the it's, oil it's and gas there, companies know? are like fighting tooth and nail to like destroy any of the stuff or buy buy the patents from people and just destroy <laughs> everything. And hearing about people like popping up dead who are like making moves in in these areas, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I know a few people, so I've got my eyes on things and. You know, I've I've seen the type of uh, waivers you usually have to sign a NDA, non disclosure agreement, to see these technologies, and they're usually at least seventy pages and very, very much like, you know, there's, the technology is very much secret. And but it, it won't it won't be that way forever because you know, all all the evidence has been left and scattered over the earth, so people are studying it, and there's all sorts of people out there, some more far fetched than others, some theoretical. In the, into the field of geometry, summon and actual engineers looking at that stuff, and and I think yeah, it's it's only a matter of time before that that knowledge of, of geometry and that dedication towards the esoteric and occult will lead towards uh, the technological advancements. But it just needs to be held in grassroots and held in patents that are community bound and just just using that basic commodity structure. And that's what we're building here at Live On Lovers, that legal. 
um, infrastructure, like I said, that involves the sacred geometry. And a lot of that is my interest at this point in my life is to, yes, yeah, is to, to build these these community structures. And, and you are mentioning before people on their phones and stuff, and we've actually got a few cats here that are real extreme like that. And they're like, you know, just want to be in the woods and like, you know, been, it's just the way they are. And then we've got people more like myself whose business and other things rely on production gear and cameras and computers and all that jazz. And, you know, I can't really get away from it, like, you know, being a, a, a trader as well. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, I, I think the balancing of the people and bringing them together is a whole other component that, um, yeah, like starting to practice group economics that like, you know, when ethnic groups move into a new area, like migrational patterns, like they, they tend to practice group economics. And I think to think that way now in a, in a collective with people that resonate on the same level, it's very important and can give a lot of economic stability to the movement and therefore bring a lot of ecology, food forests, and just general money for people's ventures, you know, for the community's ventures. And I think eventually those will replace a lot of the governments because they'll be more efficient because they'll be more genuine because the, I think politics is very intricate. You've got to, before you talk politics, you've got to talk about the whole banking system, which is the backbone, the whole commercial and legal infrastructure, which is the backbone. The Supreme Court, you've got to look at the whole government before you can really, like, you know, understand politics because it's just, just built on people's lobbying money that are corporations yeah. that are infused in contracts. Of the, and it's complex, you know? It's crazy. But um, it's, it's crazy. Because, what what like, really inspires, yeah, it inspires me is seeing that geometry, yeah, used in a way that's empowering because it's empowering. Na- nature uses it because it is an empowering exactly. algorithm, you know. Yeah, it's mm. kind of like a birthright. It's kind of like, oh yeah. So it's kind of like uh, the free technology that like God has given us, or the gods, whoever has given us. Like, look understand this stuff and you can create you can build you can sustain by using it are you familiar with jock fresco and the venus project yeah 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 beautiful stuff man i i I, I really hope somebody gets behind that and doesn't let that die out man because he's passed on now yeah yeah it's been a while since i remember that inspired me years ago you know and it was really like you know really resonated when i seen it but it yeah, it'd be interesting to catch up on one of those things. Or perhaps I'll, I'll hit him up for a pretty word. Even you could get him on the show. That'd well, be, he's, be good, he's eh? passed on now. Oh, true that. So it's up to us yeah, to kind the, of the, the, let people the know about must be these. Doing something still though. Hopefully. Yeah, they got to be doing something. But I haven't heard anything. That's the thing. You know what mm. I'm saying? Like Jock was out there doing, you know, interviews, and he was a brilliant mind, right? And uh, mm. and really yeah, showing you how like like socialism could and and does work everybody's oh socialism communism uh you just you know bread lines and all that kind of stuff but he's like look and and i'm like you know i'm not real political but why do i need a lawnmower and my neighbor needs a lawnmower he can use mine Mm -hmm. i I don't i'm not cutting my grass all week use mine i cut it today you use it, cut it tomorrow, right? And we just we just move on. Why do I need a shovel and he needs a shovel? Like, yeah, you can have it if you want it. That's capitalism. You can have it, but it's waste. It's like we don't need that in, mm. in a community. If it breaks down, we, we yeah. have a mechanic. He'll fix it. We got this one. It works really good. We'll sharpen the blades. We don't have to buy new ones, right? This sustainable community, um, but we're, we've grown away from that. And so Jock Fresco, he's got so many stories about working with the Indians and um, and saying that that's how they operated. They shared everything they had. I mean, that's where the term Indian giver comes from, is that they mm. would give you something but take it back because you wasn't using it. Like, why would, Why do you need a shovel yeah. in your backyard when I'm digging a, a ditch? You won't let me use your shovel. Like, it's kind of like, you know, coming together as a community, man. So big ups to anybody who's listening to this who haven't done any research on Jock Fresco and the Venus Project. Make sure you look it up and, and check it out. Yeah, def- definitely worth worth a good st- stimulation of your mind, eh? Get you on some, some interesting stuff. And, and I think, yeah, what, what you're talking about was, 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 was really, really on point with the Native American and, and the, a lot of the First Nation cultures. Yeah. Like, for example, over here in, in, in Australia, 
like you know when we, we were we were staying at the tent embassy not long ago i don't know if you know what that is it's like an activist set up just outside the actual canberra like um set up but it's the aboriginal embassy you know the unrecognized sovereignty but sovereignty never ceded type of place and we're staying there for a while and and, the, and and part of their law is that um that you know it's illegal to not share food so everyone always eats together because it's you know it might sound like it's quite um you know it could be quite abrupt you know but it's it's more of a cultural thing that you know one would never have food without another so if you you always buy or or, or cat hunt food or catch food as 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 a people you know because food is the most primary resource and yeah it's it's very interesting the um like the uh, the archaeology here as well what we're, what we're discovering about the people here and you know they're just as ancient as as, as africa you know and, and there's even been findings like such as like the uh, like um like but they're known as the first bakers archaeologically now because it's about you know thirty thousand years old now in Australia, they found these giant industrial ovens, and you know they found the the cultural surplus of of growing wheat and all these different things. And it, from Egypt was I think the the prior uh, prior to that was the the longest or oldest known um, baking, and was seventeen thousand years old or something. So there's like a really interesting um, thing here because the, the dispossession. They kind of took all that culture away. They did their best to destroy it, but it's very interesting. It's kind of coming back, and yeah, I think that's part of this kind of new age thing because it's nothing new about it. It's a very old spirit yeah. that's coming back, and um, yeah, I think part of that is about connecting with that ancient wisdom from from your area and from your own ancestry or your fucker papa, as we say in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Your whakapapa is your ancestry, your line of your lineage, your ancestors are. And, um, yeah, I, I think as well also in the New Zealand culture, it's very much about food and sharing and your kai. You share it with your with, with all your people, and that's how you, you know, that's what your whanau do. That's that's what family do. They, yeah. all, they all share. I've been and even the word meme. economics actually comes from the word house. So, you know, it's, you know, how we operate our house is – the same as politically. So politically, there's a big lot of corruption. But when you reorganize yourself and use geometry as the, the, the basis, like the Venus Project, but anyone could do it, you know. Yeah. Anyone could do it. You just got to be able to work as a community, <laughs> which ain't always easy. It's hard to yeah. work together sometimes. <laughs> I mean, you're in a band. Even too, with people or, or you think you right? get along so you with, eh? Know. It's a challenge sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's interesting and it's it's hard, but... um. I mean, even even a lot of his models and stuff like that are are based off of some type of geometry that kind of and like this this thing where you recycle everything. You recycle the water, mm. the water that you wash your hands with goes into the sink and then gets put into the water that you flush the toilet with. And then that water goes into a filtration system that is then used to fertilize the garden and things like that. And he has these models and stuff. And even like the way that the houses and stuff were designed, that the airflow would be able to circulate <laughs> through the house so that there would be no dust settling in the house because of the airflow of like these geometric yeah. patterns of like, you know what I'm saying? It's like really interesting, man. And we, we definitely need to, uh, champion his work and stuff. And I'm sure they, they still are. Um, I wanted to ask you about this. I mean, there's a couple of different things that just kind of staying on sacred geometry. Um, yeah, yeah. Have let's, you, let's get onto that. I get sidetracked you, uh, real easy. Yeah. No, no, no. It's cool. Uh, there's, <laughs> there's so many places that you can go. You just gotta make sure we keep, keep hitting that vein a little bit, you know? Um, yeah, but, fully. So, like, one of the most popular episodes that I have is with a guy um, where we were talking about sacred geometry. And this guy, he's kind of talking about somewhat of what Terrence Howard was talking about, um, opening up sacred geometry. And yeah. He's talking about opening up the flower of life by, like, drawing it. And there's a bunch of spiritual practices about drawing Metatron's cube and actually drawing or painting like you do Metatron's cube and, mm -hmm. and the flower of life being one. But this guy was talking about like this spiritual experience where he's like staring at this painting that he did of the flower of life. And it just begins to open up almost like a portal or a vortex. Have you ever had any supernatural esoteric experiences uh, yeah. with the shapes and, 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 and geometry? 
Oh, heaps, man. Yeah, I used to be into heaps of DMT and, oh, look, yeah, I was I was into psychedelics a lot, inspired by Terence McKenna and all sorts of shamans. I mean, yeah, I've, I've, sure. I went down that route. Uh, l- l- less so these days, kind of, but um, oh I'm very gosh. interested in also <laughs> my plants. So we still, a lot of them are legal, so we, we still grow them for people. They're, they're medicines, they're definitely yeah. medicines yeah. and the right practice, a lot of psychedelics. And um, yeah, um, I have I have seen a lot of that that stuff. Seen you know the universe transforming into you know and, and DMT, uh, dimethyltryptamine, yeah. which is you know for people who don't know like in your pineal gland and your pituitary gland and you know your gland system, but predominantly up here and then the center of your sphenoid. You yeah, like um, from when you're having dreams that that's the secretion of DMT. So. DMT is accessible through different chemical uh, compounds that you can consume or, you know, or have through your pores like acid and LSD and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you're integrating with a chemistry. So yeah, there's, there's books called spirit molecule that, that, that are, re- are relating to, um, to DMT, but um, it's most definitely known by any people out there that have played around with the stuff of stuff that, um, that yeah, sacred geometry is part of some, spirit you know obviously um it's uh, there's actually like there's just so much to talk about a shamanism because it's a very ancient tradition that's actually the backbone of occultism and paganism and religion in fact and and the things that predate religion that we know today which are predominantly Sauron and luna and saturnian based cults there used to be so many more cults that were based on different um different elixirs of intoxication and you know there's yeah the, the, the study of the cults in history is very interesting the as mushroom well cults and I'm, i've been i've been looking yeah. into because we're getting into some um um amanita experiences and so we're planning some trips with with amanita not psilocybin but amanita and it's just something mm-hmm. totally totally different compound right different relationship different portals yep, right absolutely. um and just looking up how they're related to christmas where we are now you know mm-hmm. the, the different christmas lore but then going back to the christian lore in the church and how with there's all of these amanita mushrooms um within the the paintings of jesus hanging on the cross with mushrooms everywhere i mean all of these old ancient paintings and stained glass windows of jesus with amanitas all in the background you know what i'm saying and and then looking up some other yep. stuff of like using amanitas for communion drying out and using them as wafers for communion and drinking and it brings a whole nother meaning of the wine and the uh and, and, and the body with these wafers of dried um amanita muscaria and crazy I'm, i was reading i had some crazy revelation come to me the other day because we're i'm pondering this i mean, it's a new a new thing for me and um but just looking at there's this there's this uh a scripture in the bible that talks about like whenever you uh take communion when you partake of the body mm-hmm. of christ that anybody who does it um, who hasn't done the inner work, you will you will drink de- damnation upon yourself, condemnation, and you experience hell. And so when we look at that, like it made so much sense in the light of a mushroom encounter or DMT or whatever, um, because if you haven't done that inner work, like you probably setting yourself up for a bad trip, if some would call it. But those who have done... Yeah the inner work and who are championing, uh, you know, I'm saying healing and the inner work and dialogue and getting closer to God and the spirits of nature and the ancestors. And you're doing that work and you enter in, it's a beautiful, Mm. blissful, euphoric experience. But for those who are like maybe doing it as a party drug or have unresolved issues, it's going to bring that trauma up. So like I read that after doing this study on like it's ties to Christianity and the mushroom cults and things like that. And I'm not saying that it is that, but it's a very interesting uh, theory and road to travel. And I can definitely connect the dots there, whether I'm connecting them myself, but they're definitely there and able to connect. Mm. Definitely, bro. Now there's, there's, there's dots there connected and, and the, the mushrooms are yeah they they they're used all through religious context and they're also a lot of the Christmas traditions like um, a lot of them have come from Siberian traditions and other yeah. different eclectic places not not just one but an eclectic but in the Siberian traditions 
they would also come through the chimney because at that time it would be very cold and there'd be snow and it would double as an entrance. And yeah, they would also for for a long time on the Christmas tree on on the pine tree that they would hang their mushrooms like ornaments. They would hang them on the tree for for a few days. It would dry and you need to do that for, for the for the poison to evaporate. Yeah. And the reindeers in particular, they would also drink yeah. the urine of the reindeers because if the reindeers have eaten them first, then it, it extracts the chemical that, that you don't want to be part of your experience yeah. that you need to get out of there. So, so, yeah, even the reindeers come from an occult-based tradition. Yeah. And it's not saying anything wrong with that. It's just history, you know. It's just um, it's what I, the type of thing I'm very interested in, where things come from. And you mentioned hell before, and that comes from Helios, you know, which is the sun. There's... You know, everything is all based on these layers. So Dante's it's really nothing Inferno sinister and, about it. That's what magic oh is about, is, is is persuasion and being able to make someone have a re- realization or experience something. You know, that's magic. And just like drugs to bring up these trips, you know, in, in, in certain contexts, you know, this is magic also. And, you know, magic is whatever you make it. Yeah. And we talk about white magic too, right? Like, I, and pe- people get mad, church people get mad when I talk, say that Jesus, you know, or we, we practice a form of white magic. It's using spirituality to do good, to bring about good, right? And I think Jesus was yeah. a white magician, if you want to call it in, in those co- contexts, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I think I think it's all just mysticism and, you know, magic comes from the, the magi and, um you know, these are just simply just the, the people of, of, of self mastery of, of different traditions. There's so many different traditions. So I've, I've, I've learned under a whole bunch of different, different ones, just as a person, very interested, you know, lived in a lot of monasteries and learned the ancestry of my family and went to study that. And then, you know, decided that I wanted to study other ones too. You know, yeah. I wasn't going to be bound by one particular thing. And that's just me, you know. I think religion is very customizable, and it should be as long as it brings you growth. It's it's all good. Yeah, for sure. Like everybody, and there's this thing in Christianity too. And and I I, I went through this road of wanting to get back to the original. Like, damn, all mm. of this this extras that y'all added and changed the laws and changed the names, and we're celebrating Easter, but it's really the celebration of the goddess Ishtar. Like, really trying to get to the bottom of where all this stuff came from, right? And um, and it was like a tr- part of the truth seeking process. And there's a lot of people who are going down mm. that road that I was down, and we didn't do Christmas for years because of it being the pagan origins, and we wanted to, you know, find the truth and where it came from. But the more you look into it, you find out that everything is pagan and everything is mixed. There is nothing that is pure. There is nothing that is original and preserved. Like it's all been tainted and mixed. And there's a little bit of this and the terminology and the wording. And, you know, in, in Christianity, a lot of them get back to the Hebraic roots and go into the Hebrews, right? And say, okay, they were God's yeah. people and we need to model what they were doing and stuff. But like the more you study that, you find out that they stole all their stuff from the Sumerians and the Egyptian from its the way that they were you know, building their structures to their symbols and statues and iconography. Mm-hmm. And like, they would take over a land and then copy their, their traditions and, and, and combined it into what they were doing. So we think that it's, that's there's right. something that's original that we can call our own, but it's not. Everything is a mixture. And when you understand that it helps you to kind of see everybody as a, maybe an extension of yourself, or we're all in this together versus like we have the truth or we have the, the truth that hasn't been tainted yet. Right. And, uh, and really see the beauty in all of it. For me, that was kind of like my journey of like, being more inclusive and, and respecting what other people have to bring to the table versus mm-hmm. like, I'm right, you're wrong type deal of getting to the bottom of this stuff, you know? Yeah, me too, G. And I've been around the world a lot. And, you know, you go to, you go to like Egypt and Syria and Jordan and place in Palestine and Israel. And, you know, you've got to be respectful and sometimes, you know, cause you get murdered. Otherwise, you know, you get <laughs> captive given and yeah. Right areas if you're not respectful even in like streets and ghettos like down the road you know if you think respect is just a common place you know and if you walk into a mosque or somewhere it's just good to be respectful of those people you know because they're all our little micro nations to a degree you know Mm -hmm. yeah 
but but I myself I just like to take little pieces of them all and put them together and turn them into little little communities that right. Are, I mean, you know, take all, take all we, the good we should, stuff. We should, we should be celebrating it all. Yeah, take all the good stuff, all all the weird divisive manipulation. No, we, we yeah. you can keep that. Yeah, there's some we weird stuff. That. You gotta understand. Yeah, like some of these books have been written two, three thousand years ago on slavery and yeah, like racism. You know, they're you know they're written into these texts. So they, you like know, some of it needs people, a bit man. of a yeah. You've got to kind of take that with a bit of you know a bit of like a grain of salt. Like, yeah, you know, you, you know, there's parts of Deuteronomy and things. You know, like. Sometimes you can get a bit caught up on those small things, oh, yeah. but yeah, you know I mean, the but, world's changing pretty quick. I tell you that much, man. Like, I mean, they'll take stuff out of the, uh, they'll take stuff out of this episode and just be like, you we're looking for something to get offended over or say that you're right and well, you said this, you said Jesus was a magic mushroom, or so, you know what I'm saying? It's like you kind of find what you want to be offended over or whatever, but it's like you know choosing not to be and just choosing to be more inclusive again, like just. You know, if you don't believe it, if it doesn't resonate with you, oh, good. As long as it ain't hurting nobody, like you know what I'm saying. Like, I'm I'm with you as far as like looking at the beauty in in it all, and then making this one form of spirituality again. Even with Christianity, there's so many offshoots and springs, and I think that even oh. with that, they all have a piece of something beautiful of Christianity, like the charismatics, the Baptists, the word of faith. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. The, you know what I'm saying? The Mormons, the Jehovah's Witness, Seventh-day Adventists, they all have something beautiful that they like, this is our thing that we, and it's, it's good. Like a lot of them have something really good. So it's like, find the beautiful thing that they all have and like, you know, drink from that cup, man, you know? Yeah, and not, fully. And not be devo- you know what I'm saying? devoted to any of yeah. them, but be devoted to God, right? Yeah, totally, bro. That's that's and that's the inner journey. That is the occult, is your relationship with God, just like any religion, you know. But that is a very internal thing, you know. You can you can only externalize that through symbols or through gestures or play in yeah. film. Do you hear that? Do you hear the roosters? Out I've been there? hearing your rooster, man. <laughs> oh, have you? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a call. It's a call for God's people to wake up. Yeah, there we go. Arrive Wake up with slumber. Celestial Serpent at four o'clock in the morning. Well, my time, four o'clock in the morning. Yeah, so um, let's do this. So I want, I got another question for you. We'll jump into this question, but I just want yeah. to make the announcement let's right quick. Let everybody know that we are opening the phone lines uh, right now. So if you want to call, you want to join the conversation. I see we got a couple people on hold right now. Go ahead and call. The number is 605 605- Five six two zero four four four. It's going to ask you for the ID number. The ID number is seven eight six four three. It's uh, anywhere you're streaming this, you'll be able to see the number there. Go ahead and enter that in. We'll uh, take your questions, calls, and comments right now. But um, one question before we do that, I want to ask you this: the the uh, celestial serpent. What does that mean to you? Again, the occult iconography. The serpent is the devil. The serpent is you know, poison and things like that. What does the serpent mean to you from uh, calling yourself or naming yourself Celestial Serpent? Yeah, I'll, I'll first quickly say it. It's a, it's a very deep one to analyze the serpent. It's so prolific in so many cultures for so many different reasons. But um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a breakdown because I was once actually like, you, 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 we were talking about Christian and other religions. I was once on a Christian radio station and, you know, my music can be quite iffy, quite out there. So I was quite surprised when they agreed to have me on the show, you know, and they asked me what Celestial Serpent was. So, you know, I was obviously talking in, in their particular um, <laughs> way of speaking, you yeah. know, to, as, as to not try not to offend them, you know. Yeah. Some of my music could be interpreted as an offended, but, you know, I, the, the serpent is, is our DNA. It's present in everyone. It's been used as like the, the double helix in our DNA. Right there, brother. Oh, yeah, the caduceus yes. that you got there, because that's that's the ascension of the DNA from. Yep, yeah, yeah, I've seen that as well. I've, I've been looking <laughs> at that one. That's very serpentine as well. So, it, but it's also been used. It, it represents semen and life. The, the snake is also, the, you know, the, the male genitalia, and and the serpent is also represented as, in a lot of cultures as female. So it's the goddess. So it's both of those in one. And being that it's also the Ouroboros, which is eating and destroying, which I saw the symbol as well on the video before. Yeah. 
to the Ouroboros eating as well. Like, you know, because snakes actually do that. They shed their skin. So it's a symbol of regrowth, just like our DNA, or like like it re- retransmutes and, and, and everything is um, rejuvenated over a year of time or whatever, you know. 99% of our cells rejuvenate in a year. So it's, you know, our, 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 our molecules in our DNA is alive and the serpent represents that. It represents the sine wave, which is obviously, you know, a, a very big part of the, what vibration is, looking at life through this psychedelic type of perspective, you know, which again isn't particularly about psychedelics, but it's, it is a, you know, it's about expansion, which they kind of fall in the same category. So the serpent, you know, I feel like you could also talk about the garden of Eden as well, because that's m- most of the bad interpretations are yeah. there. And actually in the Western world, it's m- more used as like dragon as a negative and the slaying of the dragon can be referenced to slaying of the ego or slaying of the vanity, depending on what story you look at. But the, um, <coughs> I think the snake is, um, is a very powerful symbol for starters, nothing evil. It's, it, it is who we are. Yeah. But in, in that particular context, the, the snake giving the apple from the tree, I mean, there's so many interpretations. I've also read occulting into this, but one that I like to, to reference is that taking the apple from the tree is actually – the separation from God, like the, in the garden, that is, is that is a child becoming the capacity to be a God, which is procreation. And as you expand from a childlike consciousness to the capacity to look after a child, you take on the role of creator and you turn from a, a, a bit of sperm, a bit of light and photonic, you know, material into the potential of, you know, of being thousands and thousands of generations of, of life, you know, and, and all that exists in one moment. And that's what the celestial is, celestial serpent, because it's not merely terrestrial, even though we are part physical, it's, you know, it's this spiritual apparatus that we're all part of, which is that geometry. So, yeah. Yeah, it's good, man. Um, you know, in, in Egypt, they have the, they, they they wear the headdresses with the the serpent protruding from the third eye, uh, That's right. symbolizing, you know what I'm saying, awakening. You've raised the energy up, and now the third eye is open. That's right. The third eye is awakened. As I've been got my new tool seat. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but oh, gee, um, I got this one as well. This this <laughs> this is my CD as well. This is Everyday Miracle. You can catch that one on like Spotify and and online and stuff. Yeah. We'll get into that too. The music's Just really good. Um, also, the serpent too. Like in Christianity, it's not like a a bad rap. It just it just represents wisdom, right? Jesus said to be yeah. wise as the serpent, but as har- right. harmless as the dove. Be as gentle and meek, but wise. So use your wisdom, but use it delicately. Don't lord it over people. Don't bash yeah. people over the head with what you believe and what is right and things like that. You know. So it definitely is a symbol of wisdom. Yeah, and I think it also captures, you know, like I, I, I don't know how many of you handled snakes, but like we get them. I, I had one. We have like, one fall, fall down just today. The big python. Yeah, you get you get them over there too. No, I, we have a snake here. My my oh. wife has. A snake, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, Buzzy. Do awesome. you sometimes get it out for the podcasts here? No, no, no. She, I play with them when she pulls them out, but you know. Yeah, they're, the they're, they're funny textures, eh? But um, what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought on that one. Something about Bring serpents, but um, can you come show it off? You're good. But, oh yeah, they're, so they're very fascinating creatures, like the, the snake as well. The way the way they move is also just like you know, just like the frequency wave, and just like the kundalini as it's coming up, and like you're saying, the, the cobra and the vulture are the two the two apparatuses that are that are represented. Um, on the on the on the pharaonic headpiece, and they they represent the upper and lower self, just like the upper and lower Egypt, you know, because things are always fractal. But um, yeah, and the comedic priesthood, like most definitely, that 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 cobra, you know, all, all the this kundalini stuff is is part of our DNA. Remembering all the stuff and tapping into it, and you got to work through all this. Lower, you got to work through the 
Oh, pardon me? You got to work through the Lord because like, because I talk about the Kundalini mm-hmm. a lot and I have come from a Christian background and deal with the Bible. So, you know, they're kind of putting two and two together. They're saying, okay, the, the serpent is the demonic or Satan energy. And then the Kundalini is the, it represents the coiled energy only because it's coiled like a serpent and just springs mm-hmm. open that baptism of fire that comes from within. Right. And so it's like, so Christians will see that and think that you're awakening this demonic dormant energy within your body. You know, it's like, what? that's not even scriptural. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like trying to work through the iconography and what, you know, this stuff really represents. And it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I've got one last little quote for you. Then we'll open them lines up and all that jazz. But yeah, Alistair Crowley said, like, the only difference between black and white magic is intention. Mm-hmm. So really to understand magic from a perspective of an occultist, if you read their literature, you know, it's it's just, you know, simply using symbology and, and, other, and other different cryptic means of communication to empower, you know. So people could do it without taking on the title magician or celestial or occult, but you exactly. know, it's just it's just yeah. a particular word of people that that are into it, I guess. Often, if you're a mystic, it, if you're doing anything, so. if you're doing anything spiritual, like you're you're performing magic, you're performing ritual, all of this stuff, yeah. and and I, I put all of that stuff in my music, and people would think that I'm doing like these seances or something, because I'm talking about ritual, and I mean, a ritual could be a sage cleansing session, like it could be a grounding, it could be like all, so many different things, you know, so it doesn't have to be dark or negative. Um, here's, here's, here's our snake. <laughs> Yeah, choice. It's getting big. Ooh. What type of snake is that one then? It's a corn snake. Ooh. Look Ooh. at that. Beautiful. Yeah. Here you go. Thank you, lovey. Yeah, so you, usually in the wild, the snake would have killed its first victim but within like half an hour of being alive, which is very uh-huh. different, the cold-blooded facet to what the serpent also is used as and can represent when you're talking about the mammalian and the serpent at- attributes of our biology and our brain's growth. You know, so the serpent can also be used to, to re- represent more primitive or prehistoric rudimentary structures of our survival based DNA, but that's part of us too, you know, and at the end of the day, people are still warring with one another. So, you know, we're still, we still are that serpent, that yeah. vicious, ready to well, go. Wisdom to war, has that person, you know? like aspect. That's still in, in humanity's psyche there too. Not really wisdom, but knowledge. I think knowledge has that aspect to be very, poisonous right to be very toxic to be very bitter even um with people if you use it wrongly again jesus saying look be as i want all of your wisdom but you got to be delicate on how you share it and and there's so much wisdom in that man i remember when i would just just with all of this stuff i used to just spout it out and lord it over people and condemn people and stuff like that because they believe differently or haven't done the research that I've done or whatever, whether it was dealing with Christmas and Easter and all of this kind of stuff, right? was big in the religious circles, but it's like, you got to be delicate with it, man. You got to be delicate with people, you know, and Jesus talks about people being like sheep and like really fleecing them. And like, you don't drive sheep, you drive goats, but you got to lead the sheep, right? You got to lead the people who don't know what you know and just kind of sh- share it with them. I-, I don't think hold anything back, but in your approach with it, be kind of delicate, you know? Well, hey. All right, let's go ahead and jump to these phone calls here. We have yeah, our first right. caller here from uh, the 615 caller. You're live on the podcast. Who are we speaking with? Oh, uh, it's me right here. Yes, sir. What's going on? Who are you speaking with? Can you hear me? Hey, what's going on, yeah. man? It's I Luck. Oh, what's going Go on, brother? How are you? Y'all doing all right? Are you a mutual friend doing between well. both of us? Thanks or you can hear me, okay. No, uh, I'm not familiar with uh, Celestial Serpent, but I'll definitely be getting caught up. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, he's got some good I like music. The topic so, far. so uh, 
Yeah, man, I was I was calling. I was going to ask. Uh, it, it's something that's been coming to me in my in my meditations a lot. And then I uh, had another synchronicity come up today, uh, listening to a Mentec Chia um, about the energy and stuff. And I had a uh, you know that's a, a YouTube video I made about the shining darkness, um, kind of like the ultraviolet, this ultraviolet light um, that kind of forms uh, in my meditations. And I had the I had the uh, you know the the, the the knowing that it was it was source energy I'm trying to show you how to describe it but i couldn't find any any information about it you know um but then this morning i was listening to one of mantec chia's um uh, talks and he was talking about uh the Tao Te ching um actually talks about the shining darkness and that being source energy source consciousness and uh, i was going to see if that's something that that either of you guys are familiar with yeah, definitely, bro. I, I think I think there's there's so many interpretations, and that's you know that's bang on. But yeah, the the, the light that shines in night, the night time, and the the shining one is also can refer to that pineal gland, you know, and that again refers to the inner temple, the temple of man. And as you experience whatever you experience, and you you know in your temple, which ranges from red to that ultraviolet, you know, through the the, the, the seven, you know, the seven main colors and the 12 spectrums, you know, as you traverse through that all, you know, that's that's the temple of man there. So I don't think you can go wrong, you know. Ultraviolet is, you know, powerful frequency that's associated with with the opening of the third eye with the, the higher chakras as you come from red up into the – into the purples, you, you know, and as you come into the ultraviolet and all that, you're coming into the higher spectrum of self. So, yeah, I, I just say what, what, you, what you're saying, the higher aspects of yourself, you're, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, it's, it, it, you know, it's, it's crazy because I, uh, you know, we're talking about uh, Jesus, all the ascended masters and stuff. Um, you know, I, I kind of had a bad taste in my mouth about religion. Um, so I kind of was throwing the baby out with the bathwater to say, and, um, you know, I know there's there's knowledge in all religions, you know, but a lot of it is convoluted, watered down, and like like uh, y'all were talking about earlier, getting back to the the roots of it, you know. And um, I, I kind of asked myself a question. I've been trying to ask, you know, the the supercomputer instead of googling everything and just kind of letting divine insights, divine answers come to me. And uh, I had this thing; it just kind of channeled through me. You know, I asked about about you know Jesus and and Buddha and Krishna and you know, ascended masters and such. And it came to me, it said, uh, I came as many men do not confuse Christ with the religious denominations or a certain man. I came in many forms and many more to come. Christ explains the state of consciousness, not the flesh and blood you associate with it. I am all that is and all that you know. I am you and you are me. We are one and the same. Christ consciousness is what you aspire to, one with the creator, the source of all that is. Once this is achieved, this is the reflection of Christ within you. Be the light from the darkness. You are all that is and all that will be. The shining darkness is the union with source consciousness. Be all that is. The balance of both is the true divine union. Peace be with you. And it just kind of like flowed from me. You know, I was in the middle of a job and I had to stop and, and type Heck it yeah. out. But it just kind of came like, you know. <laughs> That's awesome, <laughs> pretty man. pretty powerful. I, think, I had the whole, you know. I don't think yeah. you downloaded that, though. I think you got, I think you read that in my book. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. joking, man. It's beautiful. I love it. <laughs> I hadn't it. read it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I want to read it, man. I, I got to read it. Uh, we'll get I you did, a copy when you come down, man. I'm like, All right, for sure, man. And yeah, it's, it's it's crazy. The same thing with like when you were talking about the, the chakras. Um, I've been able to do that through my meditations, like focusing the energy, and then I see the colors, you know, like the colors behind my eyes, basically. And I, I can move the vibration up and down through the... Uh, and, that's uh, how you leave your body too to like look for like things. astral travel when you yeah when, I, body, I, yeah, I've yeah. actually got a meditation <laughs> that kind of guides you through the root chakra and then seeing the seats of light spinning going up through the crown if you can envision them all turn them on and move that consciousness by time by time you get to the top to the crown you're able to leave your body it's scary at first a lot of times as soon as you go out you snap right back in because of the feeling and the jolt it's like oh uh, that's strange, but definitely oh, yeah. being able to see oh, yeah. that as you visualize it and move it around move it up and down is very, very powerful when you're able to do that. Oh yeah, most definitely. And see that back to what you were talking about with the, with the psilocybin and stuff, man. Um, 
I, when I was 16, I actually left my body eight close to an ounce. Um, I just kept eating them. I thought it was popcorn. I was already <laughs> kind of, you know, balls to the wall on it. And um, I ended up having to try to make myself go to sleep. And next thing I know, I was like this mist floating on my ceiling, looking down at my body. And, you know, that's kind of when I realized that, that soul and, and physical form is, you know, two separate things. But I still didn't have any idea what a OBE was or anything at that point, you know, till years later. And I've gotten it back to where, like, your whole body starts vibrating, you know, to the point it feels like your heart's about to beat out of your chest. Mm. And then I, I pull myself back out of it like it, it scares me, you know. It, I know that if I can just break through that, I can get back to that that point. But it, it's it's crossing, crossing that threshold, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. Um, it's it's interesting. Like for me, it, it's like I know everybody's different, but a lot of the books will tell like I, you pop out of your body and you're looking down at yourself. I, I haven't really ever had that experience. I'm in like these ethereal, like maybe even like communing with the higher self of like these down these downloads that mm. you know, people talk about receiving like just so much information in an instant like thousands of years of inf- information and you're just trying to hold on to whatever you can because it's so slippery and it's like oh right. this is weird you know and you come back and you're like write it down i mean even with the psilocybin journeys i mean that was the information that came through write this stuff down and 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 walk it out right you know what I'm saying? It's like instruction. So we go there to receive in- instruction of this place that we probably already are anyway. Like our real self is on one of these planets or seated in with Christ in heavenly places, if you will. And we're just these avatars here experiencing life or taking these tests, you know? Oh, yeah. Most definitely, man. See, back then I didn't have the respect for it. Like, you know, like I do now. It was, you know, as kids, you're, it, it's kind of the direction is like the party party, you know, and. and you know, it's used for the wrong reasons and, and given the wrong, uh, you know, the wrong label, basically. So, Party drugs. Um, I mean, I, I realize now that the power of it, you know. <laughs> for sure, man. Very powerful. Anything else you want to add, brother? Any questions? Anything you want to bring to the table? No, man. No, man. I appreciate y'all and I uh, appreciate all you do, man. And I look forward to, to meeting you in, uh, in January. Um uh, definitely uh definitely something looking forward to so and i'm gonna check out that book (laughs) yeah for sure man but no that that channel that you got that download was right on you need to put that where where you can share it with more people that's really good yeah man i I, I sent it to my wife right away i mean it just kind of you know the energy that came with it was like that um i I don't know i mean I, i know that it wasn't uh i know that it wasn't just something i you know, put down. I mean, my, my hands were tingling while I was writing it. It was like, it just flowed out, you know, it was, it was yeah. pretty powerful, man. I, I haven't had that happen to me before. So, well, all right, y'all. I appreciate y'all and, uh, talk to y'all soon. All right, man. Thanks for the call, brother. All right. Good job. Bye. So that was, um, I luck E Y E L U K. He's a, uh, a hip hop artist as well. So he does some conscious oh, uh, sure. stuff. So definitely you guys listen and check him out too. Yeah, we're doing a uh, a retreat in January and then I got another one planned for April where we're getting some people traveling down from all over the country to kind of go into the woods and put our feet on the ground, do some chanting and breath work and um, some deal with some of the um, plant medicines and stuff too. So booking for that. Exciting. Booked up quick. I put the word out and just everybody, it just got booked up really quick and blew my mind. I thought I was going to have to like, you know, talk about it every, every podcast, every episode. But as soon as I did it, like in less than 24 hours, I had seven beds and they were all booked up and people are still messaging me. Hey, I want to go. I was like, Oh dude, I can't take no more. Like this is it. You know, very, it, it just shows you there's a, there's a need for this and that people are hungry and they want to return to the ancient path. They want to put their feet on the ground. They want to connect with community, like all of this stuff, dude. Well, if any of these fellas are coming over to Aotearoa, to New Zealand or Australia, yeah, come come tune in. <laughs> you do it every day. Nah, I'm joking. You say you don't yeah, really do it too oh, much yeah. anymore, right? You don't really do those type of journeys. and you, you don't have to, though. They're few and far between, for me anyway. Like, it, like if we do a microdose, that's one thing. But, like, going on a really deep journey, the, the information and the calling and the downloads that you get, it would take you months or years to unpack that stuff and walk out. 
Yeah, I think life's a bit like that just in hindsight. It all kind of makes sense as an overall bigger pattern after you can see it. Yeah, and people just want to keep returning to it like every weekend. I don't, I don't, there's no way possible. It's not an addictive experience, but uh, for some reason, I don't know. I just, I respect it too much to do that. You know, I respect the universe and the laws and like everything. I feel like I'll be like a spoiled brat to want to keep doing that. Give me more. Give me more. I want to know more. <laughs> it's like, I got oh, to do the yeah. knowledge, man. You got to do the wisdom. Yeah, I've been I've been really getting into botany lately, so just it's just never ending. Hanging out with all these permaculture botany people that can just identify any plant, and you know, it's very very empowering to be able to identify food everywhere. But yeah, it's it's, it's also very like wow, there's just so much to learn. It's have you had it's any an infinite tapestry to to study plants? So, have yeah. you had any um, experience with? Um, salvia plants not salvia extract but the salvia leaves salvia divinorium or whatever salvia yeah yeah I've, I've, I've used those once or twice so I, would, I wouldn't I wouldn't rate it for a spiritual experience but it's just me you know you might know my personal relationship with it but for some people it might be real killer and get some downloads so yeah chewing on the plant all i'd say with anything is just make sure you study what you take make sure you know it's what you think it is if you're buying it you know and um yeah don't take too much or nothing to you you know Mm -hmm, for sure i think whatever you're experimenting with you know it's obviously be smart keep hydrated and all that but it's probably just the dad and me talking now (laughs) Yeah, uh, yeah. Someone says, uh, Dale Wright says, is celestial South African? Uh, it comes from it comes from a lot of oh, my my ge- geology. I, personally. I think so. No, yeah. I'm, I'm from New, from New Zealand. Yeah, South African accents are a bit similar. Eh? People often mistake South African with New Zealand, but that's probably the accent you're hearing. But the words the word celestial comes from a lot of different places too, if relating to the etymology. Let's get into something here. And again, guys, phone lines are open if you want to call in. Um, Paranormal Portal says this. So going back to the Crowley statement that you made, talking about how Crowley says that all magic is the same. It just depends on your intention. Um, Paranormal Portal, amazing show. I was on there the other day. Um, He says he would agree with Crowley, except that there are many dark rituals, dark in quotations, which require sacrifice. Um, yeah. All right. Now there's different. Yeah. Th- th- so there, there's a there's a connection to make with this sacrifice in all ancient religions, even like Christianity, which is a bloody religion. If we're going back into like reading the text and like Yahweh requiring require requiring the blood of uh, Israel's enemies, and he's like opening up the ground to receive their blood, and this blood hungry God, like, and it was even like, you know, the the whole capstone is like the blood of Jesus, like even his blood pure. It was a sacrifice that purified the world, like it was enough for the world, like that, uh, like the sacrifice to end sacrifices is the whole thing. But when it comes to blood sacrifices again christianity is not exempt from this stuff and even if those who kind of believe that if if you're not born again if you're not a christian then god still requires the blood of the wicked to pay for their sins like somebody has to pay for their sins the earth is the earth is still travailing like there's still earthquakes there's still hurricanes there's still fires and all of this stuff so the earth is still like like a like a dog shaking off its fleas and like somebody has to pay for the the confusion and wickedness upon the earth um so there's some interesting stuff in in that aspect where christianity ties into blood sacrifices today depending on where you stand with your theology but um getting into some of the darker stuff like i believe that 9-11 was a a a mass sacrifice a mass ritual that was performed by so many high level dark occultists who run our our world What, what would you say to that I, I say there's there's definitely um, a lot of occultism and, and, the, and the fact that um, George Bush was reading a book about a lamb when it happened. You know, there's definitely occultism related. I don't know to what degree. Wasn't it? Know, wasn't you know, it I've something about uh, 
Dad Riding the Goat. Was that the book? It might have been Day the Dad goat, not the wrote, lamb, rode the goat or something know. like that, which is a Freemasonic term. Uh, riding yeah, the goat. both goats and lamb used, and and, and the and the the symbol of a sacrifice, but also the blood. I'd also like to quickly say, with all the sacrificing and stuff, the blood is actually quite traditionally a woman thing before solar cultism became so prevalent and and an education of the ages. So the the blood sacrifice is actually, and the same, the blood of Christ is actually the blood of Christ is the womb of the female. And the, the the miracle that is the, the period that is birth and all of the capacities of, of a woman and that and, and the blood. So there's there's a lot of different mistranslations of this and that. And um, in relation to Crowley, I, I think he, I was more the, the quote was more pertaining in the context of the the book, if I if I remember correctly, to to talking about symbols more particularly because some symbols use. Uh, a, uh, allocated to negative things like yeah. say the the pentagram but that's just based on phi and other amazing mathematics and it's just very positive when you understand that facet so yeah the, but but in terms of sacrifice and all that that's a whole nother thing that's that's in the black magic the intention's clearly a bit like crooked when you're getting there you know when you get into the point of yeah i don't know if you can <laughs> see it but i have a whole chapter in the book uh yeah, I can see the all-seeing eye there, and then the pentagram over there, or the the pentacles, and then I the, the crucifix, the, uh, the upside the crux. down. Yeah, yeah, which it, is also the cube as, as well as a lot of people might know the you know among being the the solar wheel and the yep. uh, solar cross. You know, the, um, well, it's just yeah. I mean you and it comes it comes down to which is really big is that you find what you're looking for, right? Like if you like with your name, with the serpents, with the symbolism, with all of it, you find what what Christmas like you find what you're looking for. You're looking for the evil. You're looking for the devil. You're looking for pagan tree. It's there. You're gonna find it. Again, that's with everything. Our yeah, cars, like yeah. the the names of the car deal, you know, the the car companies, and named after solar deities and star systems and crazy out there stuff. And if you're Taurus, like you're looking for all of this stuff. You're going to find it. It's there. But if you're looking for the beauty, if you're looking for the um, anything true and noble and what is good, you'll find that, too. And it just it says a lot to people, right, about people. They look at something like that, those symbols and say, OK, that and the upside down cross is a great example. I had a guy on here, a, a friend of mine years ago. We did a We did a whole show where we we're just kind of breaking down symbols and going through it. And I tried to tell him yeah. that, like, the the upside down cross used by the Catholics, most of us would say that that was a satanic symbol. See, they're antichrist. The Catholic Church hates Jesus. You know, all of this weird conspiracy stuff. But to them, the upside down cross represents Peter, which they call the first pope, who was crucified upside down because he thought it robbery to be crucified the same way as his savior. So it's him being who they call the founder of the Catholic Church was crucified upside down. The upside down cross for them represents Peter, the first pope. And and I've tried to tell him, like, nope, no, it don't. This demonic. It's just like, OK, like you kind of see what you want. It's both. You have to look at all the aspects and then you even approaching it, seeing the sacred geometry was like the first thing that you saw was what it what it represents in sacred geometry and, and unfolding that cross even or the solar cross. You know what I'm saying? Well, the they, equinox, you know. It, it's 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 it just goes on forever when you start to examine the uh, where our words come from or our religions. Yeah, you, you, you're kind of going to. But this, yeah, same with all that stuff. There's plenty of negative stuff you can absorb. It's all very interesting information, but yeah, be careful what you, how much information of a certain field you let into your life. If it's not, if it's not making you smell the roses and all that jazz, eh? Yeah. Um, let's see. I'm going to check out some of these comments here. If anybody has any comments or questions, you can leave them in the chat as well. I'll try to translate them over. Um, flying penguin says agreed. You will typically find what you're looking for. Or setting your thoughts on. Yeah, you'll find it. There's enough information there for you to kind of prove or believe whatever you want. 
with all of these texts, even the Bible is a very div- uh, divisive book if you use it wrongly. I mean, maybe there was some truth to back in the day they wouldn't let just anyone read it because it's like, hold on, you guys read it and don't know how to do the, the knowledge or the inner work. You're going to use this for your own detriment. I don't know because they were using it to lord over people and to rule people. And um, but yeah, I mean, just like anything, we're talking about like the secret societies and how like there's knowledge that you have to kind of like prove yourself before we let you know how to harness uh, this this type of energy within your body or or different, you know, things that we show you or books. You know what I'm saying? That you have to prove yourself versus running off and telling everybody like the secrecy and the oaths that you would have to take even within masonry and things like that so that you wouldn't learn the secrets and then run out there and tell everybody. Um, supposedly, right. that's the, the reason Manly P. Hall was was murdered, because he was openly talking about all of these mysteries with with the lay people, you know. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, he wouldn't be the first. So, but yeah, he's, he's a great occultist for people to look into, Manly P. Halls. There's some really controversial occultists, I guess you could say, you know, like Alistair Crowley is quite controversial in a lot I, of ways. I would, but. I would, I would call, I wouldn't, I don't know how much ritual that Crowley actually did. I mean, not Crowley, uh, Manly P. Hall actually did. You know, he no, was more, no. for me, he's more of a historian. And yeah, he's, you, more, he's in the literacy. He's a scholar. Yeah, Manly P. Hall's beautiful work, scholar. man. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. he's like, he's like one of my uh, my gurus. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just his work has uh, influenced me in so, so many ways, and just his study and and here a little, there a little, and like a lot of that stuff would be lost. We wouldn't know the temple rituals and you know the coming of age for the native americans and what they would do and like it was some very interesting stuff or even know the difference between white black and gray magic i wouldn't know the difference if it wasn't for manly p hall and be able to see it being operated you know in mass media and we wouldn't have people like jordan maxwell if it wasn't for manly p hall and things like that too you know yeah what what's some of the um some of the the biggest um things that you like to talk about in your music for me there's like spirituality i mean but that covers a whole bunch right so that's kind of aliens ufos do you talk about any of that kind of stuff ufos light beings uh, I, I i don't get too much into that one i mean i've looked into the subject but i've also found that from from my research uh, like a lot of the alien thing was also somewhat paired with the whitewashing of history and it was somewhat kind of taking away from the narrative that black people actually built these pyramids, just archaeologists just speaking about the anthropology and like where these people come from and from what period of time, you know. And my personal opinion is, is that, you know, that, that men built it and melanated men at that and that that's kind of the aliens are more of a, in my personal opinion, more of a takeaway from that because there was a thousands of years of racism. And I think a lot of things are derivative of that because That's it was deep. a very long, lot, those long periods of time, but I'm not saying, I mean, crop circles interest me. There's a lot of things that interest me, but when it comes to actually the history of things, I prefer to actually just look at the, the civilizations that we have who built things. Cause there's enough to research there before you go off the planet. Although, you know, it does interest me, you know, you, you do come across it looking in the occult world. There's some pretty weird stuff out there, like I say. <laughs> and every, you know, there's some authors I'll, I'll read the, tons of their books, and then I just say something. I'm like, "What's this crazy mother clucker doing?" <laughs> like, you know. And then you know, and just yeah. people. Sometimes you know, I don't, I'm not I'm not a flat earther. There's a lot of things I, I, I fundamentally disagree with in terms of my view of physics or something. It just doesn't doesn't resonate. But you know, that's just everyone's going to be like that. I think just study, 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 you know, if you, if you believe something, then you, I, I hope you researched it well. Well, if you, be, if you believe it fanatically or habitually, I should say. <laughs> and no, you can't, I don't think you could be just a, like in like a, um, you know, a passive, like flat earther. Just like you can't be a passive, <laughs> a passive. Nah, you usually got you your tinfoil a, hat, a eh? like, yeah. like to go with it. And, you know, maybe a Kalashnikov in a bunker, but you know, there's worse things to have, I suppose. Yeah, they're. Um, I mean, I, I'm not against it. I'm not. It, they could be right, but it's like I've seen. Oh, I mean, and be, I, I had be. Santos on here, right? And so it was. Yeah, when, yeah. It was when Santos uh, 
I've had him on, you know, eight years ago, seven years ago. And then I've had him on recently, you know. I think he's getting a lot better now. He's kind of, kind of, uh, you know, wading out a little bit. Um, but you could see where what that did to his research and his following and his astro theology. And when he really went on, like, really deep into flat earth and man he he was in a bat it it opened up some weird doors for him but yeah, i mean he was, I, he's I into it he believes it as, as yeah. so, you know yeah and he's also involved in a lot of sovereignty stuff and dealing with the the true law and that's a very stressful environment you know i used to do a lot of work there and that's another political thing i yeah do less of personally you know in terms of yeah other narratives like get him get involved with legal process of it but yeah, yeah, he's he's doing some pretty trippy stuff, and yeah, I, I got a song that that I did when I first discovered him and sampled him in it, the astro theology one. So, you know, I, I think the research that he's done on astro theology and you know his, his stuff can be quite extreme in terms of his view on ecclesiastic uh, Christianity, but um, you know, he tells it like it is. You know, he's I, I respect. You know, he's, he's he gives you his opinion. And I think a lot of it's amazing research. He, yeah, you know, sure. he links you back to some sources of great authors that I've read their work. So he's another gateway, but he's you know he's just another fellow. I think we We're all just are. Trying to figure it out, aren't we? Yeah, I think I think I think we all are, and um, I definitely have that stuff. Everybody has the stuff that you like. You're gonna follow them until you hear like what I was with that oh, stuff. Yeah, now you're talking yeah. about you're these, probably, if, if, yeah. And if you listen to all of my songs, you'll probably find something that you disagree. I'll, I'll guarantee you, because I've said, you know, I've been political, I've been spiritual, yeah, been into a few topics, and I sometimes disagree with things I wrote five years ago. But you know, I, just, oh, I yeah. still respect them as, oh, as a piece of artwork too, because yeah. a celestial serpent. You know, you got a name like that, you got to make some pretty, pretty out there music, don't you? Mm-hmm. But I'm playing with a band a lot these days, making dub reggae and funk and doing drum and bass and doing festivals, making that, all sorts of music. So, you got that didgeridoo yeah. right there by you? What's that? You got that didgeridoo That's by what? you? Let's hear it. Yeah, yeah. What's that? Let's hear it. Can you hear it? You got people sleeping in the house? No, no, no. It's all good. I'm in the studio. It's a okay. big property out here. I'll give it a crack. I don't know how the mic's going to pick it up, but I'll give you a quick quick whirl on this one is it's a very ancient instrument it's part of my live set you come see me live with the band like to bring some instruments Nice man. Keep it brief for you. Yeah, it almost reminds me of something where like some of the dubstep sounds come from. In a yeah, sense, yeah. Right? When we play it live, we do it to drum and bass, dubstep, yeah. loop it, and then drop some like hip hop bars and stuff. And yeah, yeah. Good, good fun. Since I've been touring with bands, which I just kind of fell into place doing, I. I was just a rapper then, you know, a little troublemaker. And <laughs> yeah, since I met all these followers, I was like, yeah, just learned all about music and played, started playing instruments. And it's just, man, music's just so fun, eh? When, you, when you're jamming with people. And, man, it's, yeah, it's so a different. Element. It's, it's yeah. so different, man. So I've got I, a few side projects where I, where I do that, and it's a whole other world. It really is. Like, hip hop can be quite. Yeah, it's just a different scene, eh? <laughs> I miss it, man. I miss being in the band, dude. Like, I really do. It's so much work. It's so much practicing. Yeah. And, and then, you know, you're talking about, like, trying to keep a community together and stuff like that. You got all these egos and all these different uh, – it's so hard. And people, like, not wanting to show up for practice and not wanting to, you know – it sucks. So that's that's kind of why I'm um, doing hip hop the way I do it. Is the fact that we yeah. can never like keep ba a band together. If I if I had to choose, I would definitely have that live sound because playing the music is different. The fans are different. Like it's something weird because like 
with hip hop, you can go see a rapper one time, and if they're playing to beats or whatever, like you, if you've seen them once, you've kind of seen them a thousand times. It's kind of how it is. But your favorite band, like there's people, there's people who are gonna get their favorite band tattooed on them, like you know. But then you're not gonna get your favorite. You're not gonna get Fifty Cent or whatever like tattooed on you. But your band is, you feel like you're a part of that band of people, right? That tribe. Um, it's because you're part of something and. And the, so the music being original, the music being played live, there's just a totally different feel than just, you know, listening to some samples on a beat, on a speaker. Um, I miss it. Just the live music, the essence, and we could change up and do something spontaneous. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I miss it. Sometimes. Holy bro, I know what you're saying, but I tell you, the grass is always greener because I did that for years. And I tell you what I missed, like... The, on the alleys and all these like you know the, the dodgy hip hop and Aotearoa like the underground scene. I miss, I miss that and like sampling records and like all the hip hop you know. So it's like they're all they're all they're all awesome, mate. Eh? <laughs> yeah, uh, we got a yeah, question here for for you. Um, I don't know how to pronounce this though, Tamu. I'm gonna try. Um, but Tamu asks, um, have you heard of? Astrarius Miraculi spirit taught him how to play the didgeridoo. It's so healing. Has he heard of him? He is on YouTube. Astrarius Astrarius Miraculi. I know I just butchered that, but does that sound familiar? Um, not not that particular, but yeah, the didgeridoo has has been used since ancient times for for healing practices and stuff like that, and it's it's arguably the oldest instrument in the world, potentially secondary to drums, which you know may be older, but it's a very ancient instrument, and it's just yeah, it's the the circular breathing that's also involved in it is quite quite an interesting expression of your breath if you can do that, you know. <laughs> So it's yeah, it's it's a deep instrument. They sometimes do it for you know hours and hours or days and and ceremonies and you know like I, I can't talk about certain ceremonies because it's like what's well, esoteric. You know, it's it's part of a tradition that has to be had in context. But um, yeah, the didgeridoo and like you know certain leaves like acacia leaves over here that would have DMT in it. You know, they were used in ancient times here, and the didge is yeah, real powerful. You know. I'm just like, you know, just playing this thing through spirit myself, but this it's involved in a lot of really powerful um First Nation stuff too. So it's a it's an ama- amazing instrument. I'll, have to, I'll check it out though, eh? Yeah, I'll, I'll check that one out. Yeah, I'll try to I'll copy and paste the way she she wrote it. Um And you I've actually got some stuff online of me doing loops with digits and stuff as well. I haven't got much of it, but yeah, been a bit, bit, a bit, bit lazy lately. Just back into the music, trying, you know, making time for the music. Cool, cool. Yeah, man. Um, I know, dude. It's morning time. Are you gonna go to sleep when you get off of here? What are you doing? Yeah, oh, it might be like you know, it's coming up to five now. I'll probably just you know been up all night, so I just like I just hang out with the family, and I don't have to do too much today. You know, my my work is quite polymath just like my life is you know i do a bits of there so yeah i'll just be having a chill one with the family tomorrow i think did get you, a little uh, bit of work done did you have a show yeah. last night you said something about you was, you might have had a show no nah, no nah. i said i will i said i'd be able to do this time slot because if i did like I, I had the weekend off actually did, did a headline slot last weekend though with about four or five bands on and it was it was a thing called schoolies so there's all these oh it's crazy man but not nah, this pretty, weekend, it, just, just chilling it, chilling it on the farm, eh? <laughs> is it I pretty like big what you're doing? I've, I've, I've seen on your website, like it says some of these shows are sold out and stuff. Are you are you guys getting a big crowd when you do stuff? Oh, yeah. I mean, we I, I play with different bands, you know. Some are like seven-piece bands that, you know, that I've, I've played with, done albums with a whole bunch of different crew. But, um, but yeah, we, we've also live on love i've got a, a record label just started that we just started up and we're releasing a lot of stuff we got promoters and bookers and stuff involved so we're we're slowly scaling up just as as much as financially and time can allow yeah but yeah we're, we're hoping to to come do a, do a tour in america going to be touring new zealand and australia 
quite a bit over the the next year about to release some more dates but um man love to come to america and wherever else all your 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 mob are listening you know where you're from love to get over there but yeah get yeah. there eventually let me know man we'll do it dude i want to i want to do some more dates as well i haven't been doing uh much music lately i've been writing a lot and working on some other stuff but uh um, definitely feeling that music bug coming back to put some more stuff out. Yeah, me do too, man. We'll, def- we'll definitely hit you up when we're when you're in when we're cruising through. Do some conscious hip hop, eh? Heck yeah, sounds good, man. Well, bro, um, go yeah, ahead and plug your album again. The, the name, how to look it up. It's on Spotify. Those kind of things where people can oh, get, yeah, get in you, touch you with you. You can find a lot of my different material with different bands, but yeah, your best just to find Celestial Serpent, and from then you can find my other bands and stuff. But this is. Uh, this is the image on um, on uh, Spotify and all that from Every Everyday Miracle. But yeah, you, I got a new album out coming soon with uh, the new band that I've been doing all this dubby. Yeah, I'm really digging the new stuff. But yeah, that'll be out soon. And generally speaking, you can find me on Instagram. You can find me on YouTube and all that if you if you if you want to check out some esoteric tunes. It's, a, it's awesome. about it. Oh, and Live it's on Love stuff. is the name of the nonprofit that um that we're doing stuff with here. If you want to learn more about plant medicine and uh, look, it takes me too long to plug it. If people are interested, they come check it out. But For yeah, sure. I'm probably about to probably call, call it pretty soon. If there's any more people that want to yarn on the line, we're happy to say hello. But probably probably almost time to call it in i think what do you reckon yes sir thank you for coming on man i really appreciate it love building with you and uh your music's good and we have to do some stuff in the future man thanks so much for hanging out with me bro Got by. much love all right all right brother bless I don't know he you. <laughs> celestial serpent ladies and gentlemen i think i called him cosmic serpent there's some interesting stuff with the cosmic serpent as well good stuff really enjoyed it man um building with like-minded people enjoyed this podcast um thank you guys for hanging out with us in the chat we've been having a lot of people hang out for the entirety of the uh episode lately which is really cool um facebook youtube twitch twitter d live periscope all those places we're streaming it's really cool um thank you guys uh, f- for all the support hanging out with that, I'm going to say peace and shalom, man. If you guys want to support, head on over to my Patreon. Check out what I got going on. Patreon.com backslash Truthseeker. Full discography. 200 songs. Check my back catalog. A lot of people are just like finding out about the new stuff and they're hearing about me because I'm promoting the new stuff, but the old stuff. Like you got to go back and do your homework anywhere from like 2012 on. Do this over 200 songs check it out with that i'm gonna say peace and shalom man thank you guys for hanging out with me if you would like to be a guest on the show go to truthseeker.com send me a message there if you would like to advertise if you have any music if you have a book or anything that you want to get out into the conscious community hit me up there truthseeker.com backslash advertise and we'll talk about it peace peace have a book, product, or service you'd like to promote? Yeah. Look no further. Ad slots and commercials are now available for you to get the word out about what you do on the Truth Seeker Podcast. We give you what you need. Get it, get it. Engage the spiritual community and get yourself instantly in front of thousands of listeners who explore the spiritual, paranormal, supernatural, religious, and metaphysical realms. Have your commercial inserted into our entire archive of episodes. That includes the one with Jordan Maxwell, James Gilliland, Dr. Michael Heiser, and that weird one with Busy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony. Stop sleeping on yourself. Know your worth. Let's get the word out today about what you have to offer. Head on over to TruthSeeker.com and click on Advertise for more info. Yo, That does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.